Welcome to another episode of What's Topic. I'm your host, as always, Matt, better known as Just for Reviews. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Luke. How's it going? Very well. It's very good to be back. It feels like we recorded an episode recently and we recorded on Monday. Now it's Saturday. I mean, look at us go. You go. Exactly. We're on a roll. We're, we're on a roll. No one can stop us now. People, uh, after I upload a video of our um, Snyder Cut discussion... Uh, it, it's got a little bit better. I think the problem was I titled that video "The Snyder Cut is a Beautiful Mess." Uh, yeah. Uh, currently, out of the twelve likes it's got, eight are likes, and four are dislikes. But I. Okay, that's better. That's but I'm one of those likes. <laughs> so am I. Oh right. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I also. So it's an even playing field. Yeah, here. and I also put in the comics in motion group and said, uh, "Yeah, it's uh, not looking good. We're getting a lot of dislikes." So I imagine those guys liked it as well. So it's mostly dislikes. Well, do you know what? I, I actually rewatched the video and I didn't see what the big problem was, but then I realised, like, we slate that nightmare scene. Mm. Like, we don't hold back. We go in quite hard on that nightmare Yeah, but scene. then overall, the rest of the video is pretty positive, I would say. It's, uh... Well, that's the weird thing. Like, we actually liked the movie. Yeah, the whole time we said, yeah, we quite like it. Uh, we, we spoke a lot about how we liked the Flash scene. and But yeah, can't have any, any negative say. So yeah, we're... we're... Luckily, we're getting no hate at the moment. We're getting no, we're getting no hateful yeah, comments. Cool, but I like those. Cool down a little bit. Yeah, I feed off <laughs> yeah. them. They are my bread and butter. Uh, you and me both. Right. Well, well, what's what, what's been happening this week? Uh, there was a Suicide Squad, uh, Squad trailer released. I hope you've watched that by now. I have. Good. I have. Uh, there's a bit of Black Widow news. Uh, we're going to talk about Falcon Winter Soldier because you've now watched both episodes. We'll just talk about episode two. I- Cool. And we're going to just talk a bit about Justice League 2, if they should make it, will they make it, and what Snyder had planned. But then I never really believe what Snyder ever says, to be honest. Very true. Uh, it's wise. So, first of all, first bit of news is Black Widow changed dates again. It's July 9th now, but I think this will be the last move. Yeah. How do you feel about that? So it's going to be... Released in theatres and Disney Plus simultaneously. Uh, but the good thing about oh. this compared to, say, like Warner Bros. HBO Max is you have to pay a premium. So I imagine most people will go cinema instead. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie, mate. I, I think I'm going to get quite comfortable at home and watch this movie. I'm, I'm not going to lie to it's you. It's going to cost £20. Um, mate, Justice League, I really enjoyed it. I quite liked being in my room, getting all cosy and watching that movie. I had a good experience. You're the worst like, type of person. Nah, I'm only joking. Of course I go to the <laughs> cinema and watch it. Um, I always go to the cinema for an MC, MCU movie yeah. all day, every day. Yeah. I think also with a 20... Some people say £20, pound, well, that's very expensive. But if you think, that's probably the cost if you were to go... If we, if we went to cinema together, overall the whole thing would cost... 20 quid, wouldn't it, for a cinema ticket? Mate, so. if you if you and me went on a little date to our local... Uh, yeah, everywhere. our usual dates, yeah, yeah. I, I reckon, a bit of popcorn, I reckon we could be looking at about 50-odd quid, mate. Seriously. Well, yeah, well, how much did... Uh, when we went in Finnymore, that, that set us back about 50 quid, didn't it? When we saw it on the yeah. day it came out. That was free tickets. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that set us back all together, about 50 quid. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, I mean... I'm happy this fine. Is I think this will finally be it. It'll be released. Uh, some other films also got pushed back. I think it was Shang Chi that got pushed back, but Eternal stayed. So it's like the back end of this year. I think M- uh, Marvel going to release three MCU films this year still. Mate, I think Spider Man's coming out at Christmas as well. Mm, is it? I think it is. Is it? Let's have a look at that. I think it's coming out at Christmas. Either Christmas this year or Christmas next year, but I'm Yeah, no, I'm starting to think you're right. No, it is. Yeah, yeah, you're, I think you're completely yeah. right. It's Christmas this year. I mean, Ramo. So, yeah, they're going to do... Wait, how, wait, how, hang on. How many damn films are they doing this year? They're doing four. <laughs> they must be doing four. So, they've got, yeah, they got plus, Black Widow, yeah. Shang-Chi, Eternals, and this. Plus WandaVision, plus Falcon Winter Soldier, plus Loki. That's too much. <laughs> That's too much. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't take it, man. Yeah, I can't. Uh, even I can't keep up with all that. That's incredible. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, four films. That no, was completely wrong. Not three, four. So July is Black Widow, September Shang-Chi, November Eternals, December Spider-Man. Excellent. That's mad. Really joking. I can't wait. I'm buzzing. I can't wait. This is brilliant. This is everything I dream of. Do you think they will get their releases? Do you reckon it'll happen? 
Unless anything bad happens now regarding the pandemic, I reckon, yeah. Well, will cinemas for us uh, open middle of May, don't they? Yeah, May 14th, May 15th, yeah, yeah I think. Yeah. I think uh, over in America, things are getting a bit more back to normal than it is here in in regards yeah. to like, cinema and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's cool. It's finally got a release date. I, ju- I just want it out now because I want things to stop being pushed back. Well, I keep, get, I keep getting... Ang- I was getting a bit of anxiety watching um, Falcon and Winter Soldier because they've come out so close to one another. And although in my head I understand the continuity... I, I need more reassurance that the continuity which I've made up in my head is the right continuity because I'm starting to think to myself oh Black Widow was supposed to come out first and like where is this supposed to be in the grand scheme of things and like I'm getting a bit they also I'm can't they can't the feed place. much into one another then can they I reckon the only thing that no. maybe would change is probably like post credit stuff setting up future things they probably maybe filmed some and either ditched them or they're going to move them to other films now and yeah so yeah, we'll see. Uh, Suicide Squad trailer that came out. Uh, what did you think? It got pretty much hailed on Twitter. I want to know what you you thought of the trailer. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, I, th- I thought it was yeah, fantastic. Yeah. What did you like I about was really it? Su- what did I like about it? I was just really surprised. Just I I, I I was excited for it because James Gunn's obviously directing, mm. and I think he's a great director, but. I don't know, man. I just thought the whole thing, even the colour palette, just the way it just looks, it just it looks like a comic book, doesn't it? Yeah. Just like exploding on the screen. Like, and yeah, awesome. you got like Rick yeah. Flagg instead of just in his, uh, what he was in the last film, just in his like drab camo gear. He's actually in his comic book costume, you know, yellow, yellow t-shirt. Yeah, um, yeah the colours really popped in it, I found with this. Don't you think it's... Particularly in comparison, sorry, go on, I was just going to say, isn't it bizarre uh, this film is getting rebooted five years after the first one came out i think that's madness it is crazy isn't it i've never heard of such a thing but it just looks just like such a different film like like i was saying just even the color you've gone from the really dark tones of the original to it just being so bright i just love it it just yeah yeah i mean that with that original i think was supposed to be darker wasn't it in line with batman superman and uh man of steel and then they obviously probably changed it quite late in the day yeah, uh, I guess because most people are saying is this a sequel or reboot? It's like a, it's like amalgamation of both. In that you. So how come when I said this right back back when, you mugged me right off? No, you didn't know they were even making one. No, I did. I didn't. I, what I said was I thought it was a sequel. No. No. Uh, no. Sorry, I thought it was a reboot. Yeah, you and didn't realize they. You, and that's what, you didn't realize they cast you so many of the originals. But that's what you mugged me off for, and it, it technically is a reboot. It is and it isn't, in that it's a sequel, but you don't have to watch the first one to know what the story is, in that it's like a completely Fair. new story. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, we have our predictions of who will live and who will die. I imagine most are going to die in this. Yeah, 100%. There's a shot where the Suicide Squad are walking in front of an American flag, and I looked at all the characters in that. And they are almost all going to die. It's none of the main ones. Okay. It's like uh, you've got Captain Boomerang, you've got Nathan Fillion's character. Uh, God, who else you got? You got the javelin guy. You reckon they're going to kill off Joy Courtney? Yeah. Nah, mate. He's, he's a star of the show, isn't he? No. Well, if you look at if you look at it, the one the matter of fact, you got Weasel. You got Pete Davidson's character. The I don't know the orange chick. You got Javelin. Uh, Captain Boomerang, arm fall off guy, Michael Rooker's character. Oh, that might be. Is that Rick Flag? I think most of them are. I think how the story will go, all them die, and then they got to get another Suicide Squad in. Fair play. So, Fair play. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks good. It, 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 it does look good. It looks very different to what came before. I'm looking forward to seeing King Shark on screen. I was just about to say that. It's going to be cool, voiced right? by Sylvester Stallone. I know. Bizarre. I know. That'd be wicked, though, wouldn't it? That'll be cool. Yeah. So yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. it. It looks good. Uh, we'll have to go back to see what our predictions were for who lives and who dies. But this is coming out also on HBO Max, isn't it? And in cinemas. But I think you've got to go see it in cinemas, haven't you? I think that trailer literally like it went from being like I'm looking forward to seeing it to being one of the most anticipated movies of the year now after that trailer. Yeah, I'm really. Am- yeah, I'm really. For- I mean, I like James Gunn's films. He's obviously done. Uh, such great Guardians films so 
yeah, I mean, I'm on board for whatever he makes, really. I'm on board too. So yeah, that's the Suicide Squad in a nutshell. Uh, should we talk? I don't know. One more, well, one, yeah. one more thing quickly. One more thing quickly. How cool does John Cena look in this? Yeah, he does look great. And his line about the dicks on the beach was excellent, wasn't it? No, like, I didn't really like that good. line. I thought it was a bit. I didn't like no, it. I, I liked it. I thought it was quite funny. And I was it. No, uh, I liked it. I liked it. He's I he is really, funny, really funny though. He is quite a funny guy. Like he's done um, a film called Blockers. He's very good in that. He's very funny in that. He's very funny in Trainwreck. So he's yeah. he's got comedic timing. He's going to be the new Dwayne Johnson. He's going to be the new Rock. He's going to be the new star. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Him and yeah. Dave Bautista. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, okay, well, let's move on to one of the one of the key topics of this podcast uh, is Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So uh, we're yeah. going to talk about episode two. Uh, yeah, I've written some notes uh, about. Some... I've, I've written no notes. Wow, that's that's a real. We've really flipped this on its head. Usually, you've got pages. I, I, I told I told you after when after what happened in One Division, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm just not doing it. Anymore. Pages of fan theories. I haven't got theories. Just well, theories on where the plot will go. <laughs> cool. But I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Okay. All right. Uh, should we start with? Uh, we'll start with U.S. Agent then. Uh, the new Captain America, so uh, yeah. played by Wyatt Russell, who's done a few things. He did. Uh, did you ever watch Black Mirror? He did. Um, yeah. He did the Haunted House episode, which I really yeah. love. Uh, so what? So what do you know about old uh, this new Cap? Who I don't. I, I know nothing about him apart from what we saw in this episode. I know nothing about his history in the comics or anything. So he's he's in the comics called U.S. Agent, and he's like yeah. he's like everything. He's been a villain. He's been a hero. He's been an anti-hero. Yeah. He he's usually a villain against uh, Steve Rogers, so yeah. I, I can't see that happening in this. He's usually more arrogant. He's very brash, and like he just has kind of different ideals. But obviously, he still wants to serve the country. I mean, do you think he's going to be a villain in this? From what you saw, from the episode you saw, it's going to turn that way, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. How I feel it's going. He's obviously quite idealistic and he's shown that at the start that actually he's, he's not on he's not a particularly bad guy um but it seems that if people aren't on board with him he's yeah gonna get them aside like also he tells bucky and sam to stay out of his way so i think that is kind of where it's going that he will turn villainous how i see it going is because he's not a super soldier is he he's just well well, they say he's not, but I'm sorry, but when you saw his training montage, you're telling me that he's not he's not pumping himself with something. <laughs> well, he's on the arm down the way he, <laughs> Mate, the way he threw that shield, like I'm sorry, you're telling me that that is hum- that is brute human force. Yeah, no chance, mate. It's no chance. comic book physics. That's all it is. It's comic book physics. I'm not sure about that. See, well, how how I see it going is because they they also made a point of saying like you're like the best a human can be. You know, you're like top dog. Without any, you know, yeah. super soldier serum, uh, and then also he he fought what what they called oh the flag smashers. He fought them and was pretty uh, pretty underprepared Tame. for that. He he, he yeah. got done. So I think where it will go with uh, they they're also going to introduce the power broker, and I think he will see that he is out of his depth. You know, he's running around with his little sidekick, uh, battle star. You know, those two, you know, obviously couldn't enlist the help of Bucky and Sam. They're going to be out of their depth and they are going to go to the power broker and probably get some super soldier serum. And from there, they'll be villainous because it's, it, they've already established that in the MCU that obviously the when you come a super soldier, it's very dependent on who you are as a bloke as well. Obviously, yeah. Steve Rogers, he became a yeah. he, he was a good bloke, became an incredible bloke and... Red Skull was a bad bloke who became an even worse bloke. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I think, yeah, it'll be like that. Because I think you're, you're starting to see some of his arrogance come through. I think you saw that sort of like when he was getting Bucky out of prison and he seemed a bit smarmy. So. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree. I completely I agree with everything you said. So who, who do you reckon the power broker is? Did, did, well, so I guess it's always that classic thing, isn't it? The big bad or the real villain behind it all. So the power broker, he's uh, a character who has 
come up more recently in, in uh, Marvel Comics. He wasn't that big a few years ago, but he's had a few storylines. He's essentially just like the head of a crime syndicate who has super soldier serum and is selling it to people. So people come to him, uh, he, you know, he, he charged them a high price. A lot of people die when they take it. But, you know, a lot of people become super soldiers. I, I reckon that General Ross is playing a big role in this. Is he? Is he going to be in this? I think he is. Isn't I don't he? know, but I, I think I think he's going to play a massive role in it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I think there's a lot of like ideals, you know, sort of to do with they need a Captain America because obviously the world is kind of fucked up at the moment after the blip, and you need you need that symbol, like a, you know, someone to get behind his propaganda. You know, I and yeah. I, and I saw big parallels. You know, he he does he's seen where he runs across the field and it's all like a big show for, you know, red, white and blue. That's very similar to but in the winter, uh, the, not the winter soldier, the first Avenger when he was doing his shows on stage. You know, it's very like yeah. propaganda yeah, course, spreading yeah. the message of America and yeah. get behind one another. Absolutely. So, yeah, no, I think, yeah, I think fun about Ross could, he could have science behind it, definitely. Maybe that was set up for She-Hulk, the She-Hulk series that's coming. Very probable. If you he's think also, there's he, he's... Super Soldier Serum, maybe, oh, here we go, now we're doing theories. Yeah, but this is, like, a very minor thing. Like, it's, he's definitely going to play a role in this, right? And also, he's in the Black Widow film as well, isn't he? So, I reckon the super soldier like storyline which is going through is which is going through these films and tv series are going to really really involve Thunderbolt Ross yeah i mean yeah. you never know okay well with the super soldier serum he is red hulk maybe that will sort of be a cliffhanger in this that leads into leads into she hulk who knows but yeah so well anyways about the power broker yeah so a big thing of why he, he is probably behind it is he gets his clients hooked on drugs that he he says they need to maintain their powers but they don't so that was obviously what though and that's like a theory that the flag smashers you know they were breaking into those lorries stealing all those drugs that they believe that, that is what they need because they've now become hooked on it okay so he doesn't want them to have it and there is your theory in a nutshell <laughs> interesting i mean it's interesting isn't it i um I, I was surprised because I wasn't particularly looking forward to this series. I'm not going to lie to you. But after watching the second episode, I'm really excited to see where this goes. Yeah, and you know, yeah, I, I wasn't massively looking forward to it. I thought, oh, you know, it's just going to be one of those spy crime thriller kind of MCU films, sort of like The Winter Soldier. And, you know, Winter Soldier's a fantastic film, but it's not massively engaging knowing that sort of the huge comic stories we've got. But I was surprised, like, the social issues this series went into, you know, sort of yeah. when... Uh, you they introduced Isa Bradley, which was a yeah. which was a cool, cool introduction, and then you know she I hope went, we get more of that. I hope we get more of that. He was great, wasn't he? Oh my god, yeah, how huge it, is that bro- bloke? He is massive. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. Huge, he, huge. He, 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 yeah, and uh, that was really cool seeing him in that, and you know talking about obviously he was a black super soldier, but. Would it be we basically had a black we basically had a black Captain America yeah. years ago and never ever heard anything about it. Well, because yeah, like, obviously they didn't want didn't want him basically. Well, it's massive. Like that 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 needs to be that needs to be uh, explained more. We need to go more into that. Yeah. Big time. I also read um, as well that his nephew in the comics. Um, I can't remember what his name is, but he plays a role in the Young Avengers as well. You know the guy that answered the door to. Uh, two of them both. Two yes, Bucky that's his grandson Sam. who is yeah, yeah, a patriot yeah. in the comics. That's it. Yeah. So I yeah. think with him, do you think we're getting? I think they're the MCU are preparing Young Avengers because they've got now. I've written down. So they've introduced Patriot. They're doing a Mrs. Marvel series. Obviously, you've yeah. uh, introduced Wiccan and Speed, who were Wanda's kids, and obviously they they haven't gone yet because obviously in the post credit they do call out for their mum, so I think maybe they will be playing a part in it. And we're getting an eye... Mephisto Isla. has been. Mephisto, yeah, fucking man. <laughs> Who is Mephisto in this, then? Uh, I reckon it... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm joking. And Ironheart. We're getting an Ironheart series, and she's, uh, you know... Uh, There's too many of them, though. 
What do you mean? There's two... It's like every kid they introduce who's a teenager is now part of the Young Avengers. You've also got, like, Kate Bishop. Oh, yeah, Kate Bishop, like, yeah. You've got Ant-Man's daughter as well. Yeah, you've got Ant-Man's daughter. Who else have There's got? too many of them. There's too many of them. And there was always bloody talk as well about at the funeral scene, you have the kid from Iron Man 3, right? There yeah. was just there's all this talk about all of them. Apparently, I was actually read these quotes actually from Kevin Feige about a week, two weeks ago, and they were asking him, "Are you preparing for a Young Avengers show, like introducing all these characters?" And he actually said something along the lines of, "It basically depends on how the audience reacts to the characters." Oh yeah, so much is it. You think they introduced so, uh, Ty Simpkins in Iron Man Three, didn't they? And there was all talk yeah. he was going to be the new Iron Man. That just never happened for him. Yeah, yeah. So he just stood at yeah. Tony Stark's funeral. <laughs> yeah literally just in the back <laughs> now like, yeah he, he, he probably walked in I like friend or family he's like oh friend and like, just stand in the back <laughs> yeah. yeah you ain't a friend <laughs> 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 what you were on the Avengers fuck off stand in the back yeah. <laughs> yeah there's so many of them though isn't there like there's just so many of them. and also there was all this talk as well about how um it probably won't link into the Young Avengers in any way, but you know the um, spoiler alert for end of One Division. You know the scroll at the end of One One Division. Yeah. You know in the post credit scene. Apparently that was Talos's daughter. You know from Captain Marvel. Oh, uh, was it? Yeah, that's all the talk anyway. Apparently that's who it was. And like, yeah. yeah there's all mate. They're always planting the seeds. So just planting them, watering them. You too see many what, seeds. You mate. see what too sprouts. Many seeds. You just see what sprouts, and you take it from there. I think that's a good <laughs> thing they do, Marvel. Is they do. They, they, they do plant them, but without going to... They don't commit Crazy, to anything yeah. compared to, say, yeah. D, the DCU in their early days committed to too much and it just didn't pay off. I don't care about any of these characters. Where's Reed Richards? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, where's Reed Richards? Where's my aerospace engineer? <laughs> <laughs> there was... Uh, yeah, I, I think that edition of Ice of Bradley was probably my favourite part of it and it fleshes out yeah, the... Cool. Uh, the MCU even more because he says he he beat he beat Bucky didn't he he ripped off his arm I think they say yeah ripped off his yeah. arm he was just curious if he was just if he'd come to kill him I wonder how old that guy yeah. is how old he's supposed to be good question yeah he might he might because he was in the Korean War so what was that like the 50s 60s so he must be God he must be eight 80s 90s now but uh, yeah. I, I wonder if he'll play more of a role in it or if that's just kind of him one and done. I don't know. That's a good question. I, I think he has to play more of a role. But then again, we've only got six episodes. Like, yeah. Where are you? What are you going to do? That we're already halfway through the show. I, I, I don't think he will. I think that was just the jumping off point to talk about social issues of you know racism and obviously that that scene. Then you know they he they're talking about because that whole whole segment is it starts with I think Falcon bumps into that kid and they, and he calls him Black Falcon and he's like well why am I why am I Black Falcon you know I'm just I'm just I'm just Falcon and they talk about uh he calls Bucky White Panther doesn't he and he say no it's like the White Wolf and whatever and then it you know goes into the Isa Bradley scene they talk about you know there was a black super soldier and look what people did to him you know they tested on him and it's terrible and then obviously they try to arrest Falcon how could you not well, know that was Falcon? <laughs> well, I I thought all of it was excellent. All of the way you know they were bringing all that stuff up, all the rape, like all the uh, the racial stuff. I really really enjoyed it. It mm. was quite subtle in a way. Yeah. And then the police thing for me, I didn't like at all. I thought that was sort of like a bit. Okay, now it's not subtle anymore. You 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 know do you know what I mean by that? I don't I didn't know, quite, but I didn't really I, like you that. know, I'm I'm happy that there uh, there'll be a lot of people in this, in this world be like, oh, don't bring politics and into it, but. It's Captain America. He, he is literally just politics. That's all he is. And, you know, I think it was just yeah. that. I, I, I think I think it's something that should be discussed. Uh, in, no, of course, honestly, it yeah. should, of course it should be. Of course it should be discussed. But there is a way to do it. Yeah. And, and they don't. They the don't. That, they, that, that, that wasn't, scene. Wasn't... I was I was worried that it was going to then turn into a scene of, you know, he then gets arrested and he's like fighting them and whatnot. Um, but it did, it, you know, it didn't last that long and they, they quickly moved past it. But it was, you know, I thought, I thought it was subtle enough without going over the top. So I, I, I thought the whole scene was, was, was actually quite stupid. And then like he goes back to his police car and then out of nowhere just randomly goes, oh, actually, 
you're under arrest. Well, yeah, but they run their names through the system. They were just dumb. Like, it was they just run the their whole names through the system. They're oh, come easy. on. You're not going to run any Avengers name through the <laughs> fucking system. It's ridiculous. You, you knew would, they both were. You'd run Bucky Barnes through it. He, he killed a load of people. <laughs> <laughs> that's another thing, actually. That yeah. That's another thing that they talk about, isn't it? The... Um, What's his name, so Corey? Is it Isaiah, did you say? What was his name? Sorry. Who the uh, the uh, super soldier, uh, uh, Isa Bradley. Isa Bradley, right. So he mentions, obviously, your people, obviously referring to Hydra. Yes. Um, which is quite cool. And now they're obviously going to Zemo. And like I, I just think it's cool, man. And we, we had this conversation, didn't we, like, uh, during uh, WandaVision about how we reckon they're trying to ease the whole Hydra stuff. They're definitely not easing the Hydra stuff. Hydra is still Yeah, maybe it's all Hydra again. Beat. Yeah. We'll never get rid of Hydra. Uh, what do you think? Obviously, obviously, we're getting Zemo very soon. Do you think Zemo is the man pulling the strings behind the scenes, no. or is he just no? Gonna, he's then going to break out and just run amok anyway. Well, I I, t- I think we 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 spoke when we were we were resp- reacting to a trailer that it looks as though they are there was a, there was a shot where they were all sort of like confiding in one another and they were all discussing stuff. So that's obviously what's going to happen in the next episode. Um, and yeah, I, I don't think he will turn out to be the big bad of this. But I reckon come the end of the series, he will break out. Yeah, maybe it'll be a case. He'll yeah. just be a character. It will be like a Silence of the Lambs Hannibal Lecter situation where like he's not the main villain of the film, but at the end he's out. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Sort of thing. Like He's yeah, out yeah. wandering about with his mask. Lovely. His mask is cool as well. Yeah, it's a great look. It's a great look, which like is it. you know, we're gonna get a very comic accurate look. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's all I have to say, really, about that. Uh, I, I really enjoyed this episode. I enjoyed it much more than the first episode. And, like, I, I'm really looking forward to sort of where they go with it. And I don't know. I, I think, yeah, it, there's a lot of twists and turns now. It's all set up now to, yeah, be really fleshed out. I hope so. I hope <laughs> or, so. Or it'll just be <laughs> another laser battle at the end oh god i really hope not but you know it's gonna happen yeah but at least it has yeah. been the whole way through pretty unapologetically mcu stuff anyway you know with the fight scenes and whatnot that is kind of what it's all about and with this yeah. i i'll let it off because it's two characters whose main abilities are just punching anyway so true. Fuck it. Very true. Just, just let them punch Agreed. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's move on to Zack Snyder's Justice League. I don't know if anyone's heard yeah. of this film, but it got released <laughs> just over a week ago, and some are calling it a masterpiece. You know, some are calling it better than Godfather Part Two. What you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a great yeah. tweet. One of the best tweets I'll ever do. Jesus. So obviously, it, it, people have really liked it. It's got really good fan reaction. It's got pretty decent critical reviews not not incredible but you know not too bad uh-huh. and obviously a lot of people so we can never get out of this endless cycle of fan shouting you know for three years it's been hashtag release a snyder cut and i thought it was finally over i thought it was finally done good don't have to hear about this fucking shit anymore but now it's hashtag restore the snyderverse so Brilliant. we're going to talk about i think you know, sh- should they do a Justice League sequel? Would you would you like to see it? And do you think they will? So, would you like me to tell you what a Justice League sequel would entail, and you can make up your mind from there? Well, I mean, please. I mean, I'm on board. I'm on board. But please, like, <laughs> enlighten me. So Snyder, in classic Snyder fashion. He just says what he was going to do, whether it was true or not, and I just don't think it is true. Because I just, it's it's the beauty of hindsight, which Snyder has at the moment. But, anyways, so, so it, it, well, from what we've heard, uh, Snyder said he planned to f- uh, flesh out the story between Batman the Joker uh, and talking about how Robin died. Uh, it would have featured uh, uh, Earth losing to Darkseid, Superman succumbing to the anti life equation, which is, I guess, all stuff we, you know, we kind of knew from the first Justice League film. Uh, Joker was going to reveal the fate of Robin to Batman uh, uh, during a last supper of Batman's ragtag team of survivors. Apparently from there how it was going to end was Superman was going to attack them and kill all of them except the Flash who was going to travel through time. That was going to be the end of Justice League 2 followed why by... Can't... Go on. Sorry, go on. No, no, no. Why, why can't we ever just have superman be superman 
Yeah, I'm not. Why I'm does not he keen have to kill everyone? Superman stuff. Yeah, why, I think why, it's lazy. Why, why does he have to kill everybody? <laughs> like, I that's think not what when you make an does. evil Superman, you don't really know what to do with the character, and it's kind of like, ah, yeah. oh, but what if he was bad because he's so powerful? It's like, ah, it's a bit boring. You know, what if you know? What if anyone was bad? Like it. And then, uh, well, uh, Justice League Three would have been a time traveling Flash to avert the apocalyptic future. Uh, and Superman would become the leader of the Justice League, and Batman would sacrifice himself to save Lois and be killed by Darkseid. From there, everyone would have teamed up, so it have been like Themyscira, Atlanteans, I guess the army. Uh, from there, defeat Darkseid. Barbara Gordon was going to replace her father as the commissioner, and Superman and Lois's son was going to become the new Batman. Why was Barbara Gordon going to replace Gordon? What happened to Gordon? Uh, well, I, oh, sorry, I read that wrong. Barbara <laughs> Gordon would replace her father after he retired and take over for Batman until the powerless son of Superman became the new Batman. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> but I love it. There's just this so much shit. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's you... just like, let's write down every single character ever introduced in the DC universe and somehow try and cram them into three films. Yeah, it's, it what, is what, what, what about Martian Manhunter? Oh, what the fuck's he, he doing? He, he, he'd just be standing in the corner. He'd be doing a Homer yeah. Simpson just going into the bush every time a fight came along. So dumb. So, okay, well, let, let's talk about... So you would like to... Why would you like to see a Justice League sequel well sequel i wanted to see a justice league sequel until you told me what was going to happen in the justice league sequel <laughs> what like, don't you like about the sequel then so it's essentially too... essentially the sequel was going to be infinity war is probably the best way to describe it infinity war times 100 like it's just too many plot points going on there's too much going on we don't need to know about we don't need this joker batman shit yeah it doesn't need to be done if you want to do that just make a batman movie none of this exactly. shit needs to be in a justice league film it takes away from a whole team we don't need to know about that we just don't need to know about that yeah one line one line or just seeing the suit with the ha ha is enough you don't need any more than that yeah you don't need more. i think yeah that comes um, to my point like everyone loves cyborg in Zack Snyder's Justice League, and we did as well. I really like that character, but I would rather have seen all that in a solo film. I think a solo film would be so interesting for that character and would really get people on board and be like, I really like, you know, you said you're not a huge cyborg fan, but you might have been if you saw a film with him and be like, wow, that character's really cool. I'm looking forward to him in the Justice League instead of introducing him like that. But yeah, go on, carry on. So yeah, you... uh, yeah, there's too many plot points. I do agree. I don't need to see Joker join in with Batman, make a solo film. All we need to see is just Dark Side. Like we just, we just need, we just need to expand the Dark Side storyline. We don't need any of this other shit which is going on. It doesn't need to happen. Just keep the core characters which are here now, with as well as Martian Manhunter since he's in the game. Let him be in the game. Um, and I just want to see Dark Side somehow get to Earth. That's all I need to see. Simple. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not keen on the evil superman because i just think it's it's, it's just yes dumb and it's lazy and it's like oh what do we do this character how do we make him interesting oh just make him evil oh that doesn't then make him interesting. it doesn't make any sense because like the character like there's no like full like character like development of the character like in the first film right the end of the film right metropolis gets destroyed right and then obviously in batman vs superman everybody not everybody, but a lot of people don't like I would Superman. say a vast majority are not happy with him. Yeah, are not happy with Superman, particularly Batman. Then at the end of BVS, Superman dies. Yeah? Then he comes back, and he's finally back, and now you're going to make him evil again. Yeah, so yeah, he comes <laughs> we back. we ever seen him be good? Comes back for ten minutes. Seems like he's a pretty... Uh, well, he comes back, first of all, he's throwing elbows and knees at the Justice League. Then yeah. he helps them. And then he's going to go evil in the next film. I'm starting to get the impression that the big over- overarching like villain of the DCAU is Superman. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's, um, he's the Thanos. He's the man yeah, in the chair. Yeah, he pretty much is. He pretty much is at this point. Like, <laughs> I, Yeah, I think it's real lazy. He's, uh, Snyder is clearly a massive fan of the Injustice games. Have you ever played those games? I've played, like, is that where it's sort of like a Mortal Kombat type situation? Yes. Where you just sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, pl- I played, like, very briefly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is basically, that brought around the idea of uh, a, a bad Superman, a Superman who got pushed too far and become evil. And it's a, it's a cool story. 
But like, that's not there, all there is to Superman. There is other stuff. And the big point of that is it's in an Elseworld story. It's part of the multiverse, not just yeah. part of, you know, the core character. And yeah, I'm not overly keen on it. And, and also it like, annoys me, like Superman and Lois is a show I'm watching at the moment. And they've got a multiverse Superman who is also evil. And I'm like, just stop doing the evil Superman. It's not... Just make yeah. him good. Make him make him save cats out of trees. I like that Superman. That Superman is yeah. cool. Yeah. So yeah, there's the points to that. I it would work. It would work for him to be a villain if he wasn't so moody and everyone hated him in all, yes. in all the films. Because it's like, well, yeah, of course that guy. You know, if he went bad, and I if I was a civilian and lived in this DC world and he went bad, I would not be surprised. There'll be yeah, so most people would say we've been warning you about that guy. He's yeah. fucking insane. He he leveled a city. We told you not to trust him. He then did it again in Batman vs Superman, and then he he punched a man so hard that his ear came off in Justice League. Do not trust him. He's insane. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. I, I I'm completely with you on that. I, yeah. I, I don't know. There's nothing else to add to that. I mm. completely agree. But saying it, dumb idea. I, I am interested to see what he would he would do in a Justice League sequel. I am very very interested, but I do think it's time to move past the Snyder films. He gave it a fair crack. He gave it a go. He had a vision, and I do I always appreciate that when someone's got a very clear vision how they want to make films, and he doesn't want to make Marvel films, which I I really like. He's he didn't want to go into that territory, but frankly, just they just didn't make enough money. And that's yeah. what that is. What it all comes down to. I mean, let's be honest. Like, there is no way that Warner Brothers greenlight any of this. Yeah. So Your, that's yeah. Like, that was going to be our next question. Do you think they will no. hashtag restore the Snyderverse? Not not in the way which he's planning on restoring it. No way. No. no, no. Way. Yeah. And also, Snyder has said no. It's it's done now. He's he uh, in complete fairness to him, he's not been like he was with release the Snyder Cut, really goading fans. This time he's been quite clear. He said, you know what? It's done. It's done. I don't think I'm doing any more, not unless they ask me, but he's also said, you know, he kind of wants to move past it and make other stuff now. You know, it's yeah. taken up such a big chunk of his life. I imagine it's like, well, you know, I've, he's moved on creatively from it. Yeah. Do you know what I would like to see? Mm. Never going to happen in a million years. This is just complete, like... I would like to see him involved in just a Batman movie. I, someone needs to give him his crazy Batman film. Yeah, the Batman I just running see around he, with, I, gun, I wanna, with his goggles yeah. on. Give him that. Film. I want. I want to see what. I want to see what he would do with it. I'm really intrigued to see what he would do with that. Like, I tell you what, I would. Yeah, I'd lean on that. I tell you what, I would like. They should do a multiverse film and say, "Here's a Batman from a different multiverse. It's in the nightmare sequence. Have at it." And it's just yeah. Batman on his adventures. And you could make that quite cheaply as well, because I guess they don't, probably don't want to give him much money now, considering his films haven't returned enough for them. Yeah, I, yeah I'd be definitely interested in that. I, I Thing is, I'm as a fan, I want to see the films, definitely. I want to see what he would do. But if you then put on your, like, you know, your studio exec hat on, it's like, well, they're just not going to make them. They didn't work. Was there, was there anything in what you've just read about, I, I can't remember if you mentioned anything about the Green Lanterns. No, there's always been rumours he was always looking to put them in. Um, Because they were they originally announced a Green Lantern Corps film after yeah. Justice League 2. That was going to come out. But yeah. obviously that never happened. He, he did, there's like little notes that, you know, a Green Lantern would come and, you know, fight with them. I guess maybe that would be the end of Justice League 3 when everyone together fights Endgame styles. But like that worked because people were seeing this and be like, oh, it'd be so incredible, be so incredible. And like, yeah, look cool, but it's not a fleshed out universe. So it doesn't have the same yeah. impact that say like Endgame did. And it was like, yeah. here we, this is the amalgamation of 10 years god knows how many films and yep, like absolutely. wow how incredible is that absolutely we've been very negative absolutely. on the old justice league sequels <laughs> no but it's just it's just it's frustrating because the film ends and you think you ended this really well like and you can go somewhere with this if you're given the green light and then you read what he's got planned and you just <laughs> think you haven't learned from your mistakes 
what yeah. we are telling you not to do is still what you want to do. Like, do you understand what I mean? Like, yeah. It, 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 all this would work if it was a fleshed out... You, yes, uh, it's too convoluted. It's yeah, too, too convoluted. convoluted. You know, stuff yeah. with the Joker and... He doesn't need to doesn't play a part in this. Be. Yeah, no, like that's a, that's Jared a, Leto does not need to be anywhere near yeah. this. Like, that's a Batman solo film. That's a Batman solo film. That's what they should have done if they did a Batman solo film. Hint to that. Have him fight Deathstroke. Sequel. Talk about when he killed his Robin. Cool. You know, you don't... I, can't, not, I, I would kind of like to see a little 10 minute short of uh, Robin getting killed by Jared Leto's Joker. <laughs> well, he... he I, I watched a good interview with uh, Snyder and someone asked, have you thought about how you would film that scene he said yes i have i've i've got it in my head how that scene would go and obviously we will never we'll probably never ever make it but he did say to warner brothers can can i write a comic and put it in a comic cool. and release it with Zack snyder you know you know put it in release with uh snyder snyder's justice league and they said no and i was really surprised they did that that would have been cool right and a lot of people would have bought that because usually comics that tie into films they don't sell all that great. It's just fans. I've got a few. I, I bought the comics leading into Infinity War and Ant Man and Captain Marvel stuff like that. They're, they're not flying off the shelf, but you're you're releasing a film which only fans are going to watch anyway, so they'll gobble up anything to do with it, any any more storylines. So I was surprised I never made that. I would really like to have seen that comic. Which, uh, I shame. although I don't, we're getting a bit off tangent here with regards to what we're talking about, but. <laughs> Although I'm not a fan at all of how he portrays the Joker, I'd really like to see him just have, not in Justice League, just to be clear, not in yeah. Justice League, but just have more to do. Yeah, I think he really needs a fair go to... of it, doesn't he? He needs a fair go. Yeah, like, I want to see what happens when he loses it. Yeah. Because at that moment, all you see is just him literally just, like, getting in people's faces and being really weird and edgy. Like, what yeah. happens when he loses it? Giving, like, people, like, giving people reach arounds, I think. Well, there you go. That's probably what yeah. will happen. I think uh, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very strange, isn't it? <laughs> so weird. What a weird line. The, but, the whole thing I thought was weird, but let's mm. not talk about that because we'll get so much hate for it again. Yeah. But that's the thing, like talking about like Joker, you know, they would have explored more of that. That's not the place for a Justice League film. It's not a Batman film. You know, in the Avengers films, they're not looking at you know captain america's not talking about red skull you know stuff like that they're not you know looking back at their villains that they're dealing with those in their own solo films when it's the the story is their focus by doing that you're pulling focus from the league onto a character and obviously it's the one the biggest character and everyone loves batman but i think that's wrong for dc to do and snyder because you've got to you, you know he knows people associate with batman and people know who batman is but you've got to build your other characters as well and it's just obviously the conf- he doesn't have the confidence in building your cyborgs your flashes your aquaman because people don't really know who that character is but marvel did it you know they you know they got the world loving a character called captain america and that's just fucking bizarre to me that yeah, you know, it's crazy. I thought about the other day, who's my favourite Avenger? I think it's probably Captain America. And it's, what kind of name is that? What kind of character is that? That's yeah. ridiculous. But I love that but character. It, but, but, he, but even when Iron Man come out, he was never like, a, he was a secondary character. Yeah. He was never, he was never one of the, ma- the major, you know, the big ones. He was never a Spider-Man, was he, or anything like that? No, like, that. And yet, you know, with good writing and good direction and someone up top, they made that character. If you think, like probably the biggest Marvel characters for MCU came out was probably... Spider-Man, well, Spider-Man's biggest character in the world. X-Men, yeah, agreed. maybe Fantastic Four, uh, Daredevil. He was pretty big, and th- yeah. th- that that was pretty much it. And yeah. like you know, maybe four people knew who he was. Captain America yeah. was fairly big, but you know, the the Marvel, the MCU characters, the original. Oh, Hulk! Hulk was pretty huge, actually. Yeah, Hulk, 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 Hulk and Spider-Man and X-Men. I'd say were probably the yeah, probably the ones trio. everyone knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like you know, then they built the Avengers around characters people didn't know, and now they're the now they're the biggest ones, and that's what I think Snyder needs to focus on more instead of going back and going, oh, this is what was going on there. It's like it's not it's not the point of the film. We need to talk about the league. So yeah, yeah. Agreed. Do you think so? You don't think they'll make? You don't think he'll get his Justice League sequel? 
Do you think, do you think there's a chance? I think there's a chance. I do yeah, think there's, there's a chance. Yeah, there's definitely a chance. There's a very slim chance. We're, I'm, I'm talking about 15% chance that he gets it. Because the only the thing that I don't think it probably won't get made is we're four years on from when the original one got released. The Justice yeah. League, as people like to call it mm-hmm. now. So, and everyone's moved past it. You know, Ben Affleck is saying, I'm not doing these films anymore. Henry Cavill doesn't appear to be interested. Well, I think he wants to, but they don't know what to do with him. So it's all kind of, I think the They're, vote is kind of sh- gone. The, sh- the studio's going in a different direction now. Yeah. It, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, you know, the, the the boat's left. You know, the horse has bolted, as it were. And it's like, well, we can't then, we can't go back because we're already moving forward. And the general audience member... It doesn't remember that. They don't know what Justice League was of 2017. They only know, you know, you know now what's happening. You know, the Suicide Squad. Oh, yeah, I'll go see that. Or, you know, the Aquaman. Yeah. You know, I saw that film a couple of years back. I'll see the sequel. It's like it's moved past that. So it's like, why would you now call back to it when you haven't been establishing elements from that yeah, point? But, but it's still strange at the same time, isn't it? But like, although we're saying they're moving on, they still obviously made the Wonder Woman 2 film. And they're gonna make Wonder Woman three. Yeah. Aquaman two will be coming out. Like, so it's 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 an odd, it's odd, isn't it? Like, do we just forget what's happened before? Like, mm. it's a strange scenario to being. I and mean, then at the same time, they're also, you know, all these different branches are growing. I and mean, then you've got the Matt Reeves Batman film coming out. And like, it's just, it's odd, isn't it? You know? Yeah, they because they're just they're not they're not building towards anything at the moment. No, I, and I think. That's the best way to do it. Sometimes yeah. Yeah, the the first few MCU films weren't building towards anything, and then yeah. they, you know they they kind of realized they got it right with their characters, and then it was time to build a larger story. Right now, it's just let's get some characters established, let people yeah. go watch these films if they've never seen a previous film, and we'll go from there. We'll see who comes out as characters people like. You know, like you know, you got if people like Aquaman, great, we'll make more Aquaman films. People like Shazam, we'll make more Shazam films. So. I, I don't want to see anybody, anybody um, appear in Matt Reeves' Batman movie. I don't want a reference to a bigger universe. I don't want anything. I just want my grounded dark. They, yeah, they won't be, will they? Yeah. I reckon, do you know what? It could be a possibility. They do a multiverse kind of thing to say he's on a different, he's in a different universe. Yeah, totally. Yeah, 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 I agree. Which is what the Arrowverse has done, because technically the DCEU is part of all that. You know, the DC TV shows. Ezra yeah. Miller showed up in one that he just yeah, yeah. he jumped from a different universe and met with the Flash there. So there's, there's and also I was thinking there's possibilities there. You could build something there. You know, do that. You know, DC love multiverse stuff more than Marvel and build a story yeah. from that. Yeah. But overall, I mean, do I want to see these Justice League films? Kind of. Because I do just want to see where it was all going. It was all building the sign. Let's just see what he would have done. Do I think it would yeah. have been good? Probably not. Uh, and will they make it? Almost definitely not, I think. No. The hashtag restore the Snyderverse is a pipe dream. But then again, I thought the release of Snyder Cut was probably not going to happen. And here we are. It's crazy that it... Like, I'm sorry, just take a second to sit back and actually like take a breath and be like, it actually happens. Like, yeah. If we could go back in a time machine four years ago, three years ago, we never in a million years would have thought this would have happened. No, definitely not. Definitely crazy. Not. I, I, I was pretty much like, hmm, does it really exist? Is it that different? And here we are. I was wrong, so fair enough. I mean, yeah, it's. We'll see. We'll see. I think also you have to remember, like, you know, it's four years on. Um, it, it takes it takes a lot of effort. You got to put a lot of work into these films, and does Snyder want to do that now? You know, he's making his zombie film. Maybe he just wants to make other stuff. I think he felt that by two thousand and one. Uh, 2021 he would be finished by now with yeah. those films it's like fuck me i'm still doing this stuff like let me yeah. just kind of move on from it now 100%. So, yeah. uh okay well that's that's, that's kind of everything i have to say Sorry. on those sequels should we do a little bit of uh what we've been uh watching this week to it's been uh, so long since we've yeah, done we this really so- uh, do you know what I've been watching loads, so I'm happy to go first while you think of something that you've been I, I've watched so much, but I've written nothing down, and now I feel very much on the spot and pressurised. Well, I'll talk about something I've been watching. and then. Uh, so, I've been watching a lot of the DC animated movie universe films. 
Yeah. I've been wa- I watched them a lot in preparation for the Snyder Cut. Yeah. And I watched, <laughs> funny enough, I've, I think I've seen one of them. I've seen the Flashpoint film. And then they finished that universe last year. Uh, so I watched the last one that they finished with. It's called Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. And basically, if you want to watch a film that will make you feel like shit, watch this film. <laughs> Why would it make me feel like shit? Uh, so the story is, it's it, it basically starts there, all the Justice League are meeting. There's all the characters as well. It's like, it's not just six or seven of them. It's like 40 characters. And uh, Superman's like, guys, Dark Side, he's got a plan. Let's go get him. Let's go fight him. Uh, what they don't realize is Dark Side knows they're coming. And instead of parademons, they're called paradooms. So they're parademons crossed with doomsday. They basically oh. beat the shit out of the Justice League, kill them. There's, you know, Wonder Woman's got her arm ripped off. Shazam got, her, got his leg ripped off. People are getting eaten by the doomsday parademons. Uh, uh, basically only Constantine and a few others get away and Darkseid takes over the world and he's fucked everything up and then they basically go for one last fight against Darkseid and yeah that's that's kind of it uh, Superman's been depowered he's got like kryptonite running wow. through his bloodstream it, and it's, it's very gore filled and lot of swearing and just yeah it generally made me feel like shit but it was all right it was decent yeah. it was decent enough and that <laughs> yeah. and that finished off the universe uh so they're not sure what they're going to do with it now but that was supposed to be the last film it was Brilliant. decent yeah just want to get really down now i feel like shit talking about it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i feel awful i'm yeah. just remembering the film it was uh <laughs> it was decent it was um it, it does suffer kind of from like the snyder type of filmmaking of being edgy for the sake of being edgy so cyborg dies in the end spoiler and he says i get to say the last last word and i thought he was going to say booyah because they'd won the day and that's cyborg's catchphrase and he says yeah. and he says instead suck it bitches and i love thought it. what the fuck was that like, it was such a <laughs> weird line i love so it. yeah that's uh something have you thought of anything I can keep going. I've got something. I've got other stuff. I I have thought. I've, I've, I have thought of something. Yeah. Yeah, go on then. So, well, well. I've seen a few films that have been released in 2021. My number two of the year is currently oh. Justice League. Oh. Right? Justice yes. League's currently on my number two spot. I mean, obviously, yeah, not a lot of films come out yet, but yeah. number two is Justice League. Number one was they remade uh, the film Wrong Turn. Oh, okay. What's what's Wrong Turn? Never actually heard of that film. So it, it, the original, the original that came out, I think it came out in two thousand three, maybe two thousand four. I can't remember. I, no, maybe it was two thousand six. I can't even remember. I'll tell you right now. I'm literally staring right at the DVD. What year did this film come out? This is what it looks like, by the way. What year did this film come out? Two thousand and three. Wow. Um, original film, very very basic, like standard slasher film. People's car break down. They go to look for help. Hillbilly cannibals in the in the woods. It sparked a series of films which are absolutely appalling. But yeah. the first one's okay. The, the first one sits quite well with me. They remade it, um, but they took away the whole cannibal idea and the hillbilly idea, um, and they did a little modern twist on it, and it was really, really good. And so far, it's my favourite film I've seen all year, hands down. Very good. So, you love your slasher it, films, don't you? Well, I love my horror films, mate. It's my favourite yeah. genre of movies. I love a good horror movie. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I've been watching a series... Um, I've never I've never watched the Arrowverse stuff, you know, like you got Arrow, got the Flash, yeah, 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 Legends yeah. of Tomorrow, but they released Superman and Lois, and I was like, yep. God damn, I love Superman, I love me some Superman, uh, so I'm gonna watch that. Uh, obviously, it's not been released over here, but I have my ways, I have my methods love of, it. Uh, but it's been fantastic, it's been brilliant. Uh, the man who plays Superman, Tyler Hoechlin or something like that, his name is. He's awesome in the role. He's really good, Clark Kent. And it's about uh, Clark and Lois go back to Smallville to live after Martha Kent dies. And he has two teenage sons, which is different from the comics. He only ever has Jonathan Kent, who is superpowered, usually. Uh, in this, he has two sons. One is a football star he's he's doing really well at school and the other one's like suffers from social anxiety and has a lot of mental health problems and it's just about them dealing with you know everything that comes with being superman and lois being her the reporter and essentially they move and it kind of 
flips on itself that the child with social anxiety has some minor powers whilst Jonathan Kent who usually does have powers doesn't have any and he's getting bullied at school whilst the other kid is getting a newfound confidence and is doing yeah. quite well it's a it's a good show it's a good show although they introduced a evil superman in an elseworld story which i oh, they said did, didn't they? no thank you <laughs> <laughs> no thank you thank you very much so Would yeah no it's really good that, yeah? i definitely recommend it i think the best thing about it is because i was a little bit worried i was like i've never watched any arrowverse stuff and there's like 40 series of tv shows so i'm worried yeah, here. but you don't need to it, it doesn't even reference the arrowverse larger universe i assume cool. it will probably like in series two but right now you could just watch this show and have a an understanding of who superman is and what he's all about but then you, you could just yeah you could just watch it so yeah I, I i got it and i was like great this is perfect to just sit down and watch i might start watching the flash because of this i don't know but there's like seven series so i'm like fuck that maybe not bit of a long slog isn't it yeah right? exactly yeah man anything um, else for you yeah i'll tell you what i did watch uh this is actually quite a while ago but because we haven't spoken about it for so long i um i bought the box set of band of brothers oh wow band of brothers cool that's going back isn't it what a show never watched it before yes i've watched never... it before it's very wicked, good wicked show i haven't wicked watched that show. in years though i might have to i might have to give it another go again it's excellent. I and mean, I also, I haven't started watching yet, but I just bought the box set of the Pacific, uh, which Never is obviously, that. so it's the same sort of concept, same, same people that made it, same, same showrunners, but obviously it's based in Japan. Oh, I have heard that. Yes. They talk yeah, more yeah. about, yeah, Japan stuff. And cause obviously yeah. I think a lot of that stuff about the war goes unnoticed, doesn't it? So it's like yeah. a cool story to jump into. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. Right, it's cool. Yeah. I, I watched, I started watching Line of Duty, talking to more serious stuff. Yeah, I've never watched one. My, my girlfriend's obsessed with it, but I've never, I've never actually watched, watched an episode. First series in about two, three days, five episodes. Yeah. Amazing. I'm halfway through the second series. And I couldn't recommend it more highly. It is okay, fantastic, cool. and made by our very own BBC. So up the BBC. Got, to, got to support. <laughs> I, I got, uh, yeah, I got uh, one last thing I've, I've watched. It's funny. It's all mostly DC shows. It's all I've, I've said four things. Three are going to be DC and one's not. Uh, I've almost finished the Harley Quinn animated series. You really like that, don't you? you it you is re- yeah. fantastic. I couldn't recommend yeah. it more highly. It's brilliant. Uh, it's she is uh, the uh, the woman who played Penny in Big Bang Theory. She voices Harley Quinn. Cool. She, I think she I think she played a good Harley Quinn, a good live action one. I think she played a great Harley Quinn. Yeah. Yeah. She's awesome in it. Uh, it's it's voiced so well, and it's funny, like because all the characters are kind of parodies of their comic book counterparts. Like Commissioner Gordon's like this depressed, washed up police officer who's all fat, let himself go, who's obsessed yeah. with Batman, who thinks like Batman's his only friend. He's fantastic, but the characters are still core of who they are, and yeah, it's good. And like what I like is Batman's like the only serious character in it because of course he would be. You like he's yeah. not. He doesn't. The parody of him is that he would be just yeah. normal. So yeah, I can I can high more recommend that show. So yeah. Okay. Anything no, else? Man. Any any, any um, more for any more? from me, just there, there. There's so much I could talk about, but I just want to give a special mention to uh, Always Sunny. I'm smashing through that. I love. Oh, it. how many series are you through that now? I think I'm on season seven at the moment. So I've I've actually sorry, no, I just finished season seven. So I just finished the High School Reunion episode. Oh, that's um, fantastic episode. Yeah, but yeah. I and obviously this is the season as well where Mac gets fat. Um, yeah, Mac's fat now, which is awesome. The best episode of this series was there was two which really three actually. This has been a really really strong series actually. Three quality like three of the best episodes. One where they go to the Jersey Shore, which is phenomenal. Yeah, the Jersey Shore one's my favorite yeah, yeah. one. Phenomenal. Um, the episode where they're in most people's houses, they're they're trying to get that thing in the people's houses, and they're like sort of in the cupboard. Oh, the pot! Yeah, they were trying to get yeah, like yeah, just yeah. like a pot from them, aren't they? Yeah, you yeah, don't really yeah, know why yeah, they yeah. want it. <laughs> yeah, 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 excellent. And then the other episode, which was brilliant, is it's done with that countdown. They're trying to get to the theater to watch that movie. Fun the gun. That... Absolutely, that's probably the best episode of the series. It was oh, me and my girlfriend we always talk about the two ones we still talk about. Like we've watched every episode, all fifteen series. The two episodes we talk about all the time are the Jersey Shore one and the Thunder Gun episode. I watched Incredible. the Thunder Gun one the other time. Incredible. Dude hangs down. Dude hangs I, down. I, I I still think I still think the best episode of the show up to yet up to now is still the Nightman Kameth. 
the um the no man can't is incredible yeah it's incredible for me that's the best ep- that not just is that one of the best episodes of the show but that's one of the best episodes of tv i think yeah. i've ever watched like it's oh, so i could good. not stop laughing that yeah that, it, it's just incredible and you, you know they all they all write it don't they yeah it's wicked they yeah, all yeah. write it create it and they, i think they're doing another three or four more series and uh i, I put a tweet out the other day actually about it's like if cancel culture exists like how's that show still going it's true. Do you know what I mean? Like that it's, it's true. I mean, I've, so I've... edgy and it's always changing. Like it understands what it can and can't do. Because I think a load of episodes on Netflix are taken down because they did blackface. Well, I had to find them online. <laughs> I, I, I haven't seen. There's one. Have you seen when they do a Lethal Weapon remake? Yeah, that's the one I found online. Yeah. yeah. When, and when then Charlie's he... the janitor as well in that episode, isn't he? He's the janitor of the school. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then they did another episode. They did another Lethal Weapon episode where they did a sequel to the one they made. Okay. But I haven't seen that one because it got taken down before I could get to it. So okay. I might have to try and find it. But yeah, like they, they're very edgy and very... But they do it in such a good way that no one really ever cares. And they've always stayed out of controversy. N- yeah. Nothing they've ever done has been controversial, which is incredible. You know, they've... They've, they've said a lot of race racist things a lot of homophobic things talked a lot about sexual assault and you know yeah. like there's running jokes that one of the main characters is a rapist yeah and there's, you I know, know a sexual know, abuser know. and it's yeah. like wow how are you yeah getting through this you're very talented to know how you can craft as the, a joke as the, as the show's gone on the that, that character has become more and more yeah it gets more and more un- unhinged yeah Wait, well, yeah. yeah, he's going to get more and more. Yeah, well, he, they, they've they hinted to him now being a serial killer, haven't they? Because he goes to his car. Yeah, and, and he's, he's got boot of his bikes. car. Yeah, 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 yeah He's yeah. got a flashlight, and he says yeah. there is tools. Uh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. gets more and more unhinged <laughs> as the series goes. Bloody hell, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, I think that's the episode. So thank you for listening. Uh, it's always nice. It seems that we're doing okay on listeners at the moment. We seem to be slowly building. Good. So yeah, as always, you can follow us at What's the Topic Pod on Twitter, Luca Elfiarka, and me at Jasper underscore Reviews. But well, all I have to say is thank you for listening. Awesome. Thank you.